Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Gradients are a really cool effect that really make your iOS apps pop and shine. And whether you're working professionally or you just want to add a nice background color to your app, come on in and together let's take a look and see how we can add this really cool layer effect to our iOS apps. All right, let's fire up Xcode, create a brand new app. Let's call it Gradient Fun. Feel free to save this wherever you like. I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. And let's just go into the view controller. This is where we'll do our work here. Let's create a little bit of space. And let's see first what it takes to build this kind of a gradient going from red to blue, top to bottom. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm actually not gonna work in the view to load here. I'm gonna come down and work in view to appear. And what we're gonna do here is create something called a CA gradient layer object. This is a core animation layer that sits just underneath our view. And you might use core animation to round corners and add shadows. Well, in this case, there's a specific CA gradient layer just for gradients, just doing this nice colorful effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one of these layers we're gonna do it in view did appear because I wanna get the bounds and set that, the bounds, basically what's available for invisible in my view. I wanna set that to the gradient layer frame. I won't get that in view did low. That's why I'm doing it here. And then basically to draw your gradient, all you do is specify your colors. In this case, a red and a blue. And we add that to the views layer as a sub layer. So if we run this now, voila, we'll get a nice, top to bottom, red to blue, kind of gradient going down. And that's the default orientation of what a gradient will look like just by default. Now to set the direction of your gradient, we use these things called start and endpoints. Let's quickly review the core animation coordinate system. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, we have the origin 00, zero and increasing y and x, we go down to one, one. We use this coordinate system to set the direction of our gradient. By default, we went from top to bottom. We didn't have to specify these here, but the equivalent coordinate system would be 0 0.50 and an x of 0 0.51. That would go top to bottom. To go left to right, we'd specify an x of zero and a 0.5 for y, going over to an x of one and a y of 0.5. And to go from corner to corner, we can just go to the origin down to one, one using this thing called the start and the end point. Adding these to our gradients is actually pretty easy. We just come in here, find our gradient layer, set the start and the end point. In this case, we're gonna go from left to right, X of zero to X of one, all at a Y of 0.5. And if we do that, we'll get a nice gradient going over this way. And likewise, if we wanted to go from the upper left-hand corner to the bottom, kind of more in a diagonal fashion, we could just change these to one, one, and that would indeed shift and move the gradient from the origin up here down to a Y value of X in one, one. The way we control the colors of the gradient is by setting this colors array right here. And right now you can see we're just going from red to blue using the two colors and it's blending the two red and blue covered or uh, combined to make purple and you can see that gradient effect here but we can also control the spacing let me show you what i mean if we add in some more colors here i'm just adding in a variety of colors here and we run this by default the gradient layer will evenly space these out and kind of give each color equal weighting but we can control that by setting something called the color locations, normalized between zero and one, we can specify what color we'd like to appear where. So now when we run this, we can control how much color, where its relative position would be, and give it some really nice effects like this. Now another cool thing you can do with gradients is they don't just have to be linear. They can be radial. Let me show you what I mean. If we come in here and we change the type of our gradient to radial, which means kind of circle-ish, like a circle. And if we change these colors to, I'm just gonna go to a nice orange and red, and I'm gonna set the starting point here to be halfway in 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the middle, 
and then it's going to go out to an end. That's going to give us a nice circular effect. I don't need these circles or sorry, these colors and locations here. So I'm just going to get rid of these. But if we run this now, look at the nice kind of halo and, and glowing effect this comes. Here we're basically setting a radial gradient starting at this position here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, going out to 1, 1. And it's this radial type that gives it that really nice gradient glow going from orange to red. Just stunning, very, very pretty. Now, so far I've shown you just the bare bones thing we can do to get a gradient layer going. And this is absolutely fine. You can add this to any view controller and add it. But what I wanna show you now is how to work with these as a view and then add it explicitly to a view controller, which is typically what you do more in a, a real application. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's come into our application here and I'm just going to define some nice colors here. This is gonna be just a light blue, a light purple, and we're gonna use these colors in a custom gradient that we're gonna build ourselves. Now the view we're gonna create, I'm gonna call this plain linear gradient view. I'm just copying and pasting some code in, but let's just go over what this is doing because it's really nothing complicated. All we've done here is we've created a class called linear gradient view, and it's gonna extend a UI view. This is the gradient view we're gonna create. Here's those colors we just defined. These are the colors we're gonna use for our gradient. And in here, we're going to explicitly create our gradient layer. So it's gonna create that as a variable here. This is all standard, just initialization stuff. And then we're gonna come in here and just like we did before in our view controller, we're gonna set the colors and add it as a sub layer. That's basically it. There's just one function down here called layout subviews. This is what gets called during auto layout. And here we're just gonna set the frame of our gradient to the bounds of our view. We're basically doing the exact same thing down here in our gradient view that we just did kind of hard coded up here in our view did appear. But watch this now. Now that we've got this view defined, we can just come in here and set. Instead of hard coding the gradient in here, we can get rid of all this and just reuse that linear gradient view we created below. And we can do that in load view. This is a really nice function we can override a view controller where we can set the view of the view controller to be equal to our linear gradient view. And what that will do is that will fill the entire view with the gradient we want, which is great. But now we're still free uh, to do the rest of our design here. For example, we could come down into view did load. We could do our view did load work down here and we can still add sub views to our components here. So here's where we could add our buttons, our labels, we could do a regular auto layout work, but this is a really nice way to reuse this view right across many, many view controllers. Okay, for our final gradient trick, let's look at how to do some animation. And this is really cool. What I've got here is an extension on CA gradient layer. And I found this example where we can set the colors, but do it in an animated way. So we can specify that we'd like to animate with the duration. This is a timing function specifying how we'd like our animation to go. But really the bulk of the work is right here. What we're doing is we're creating something called a CA basic animation on the key path colors. If you need a refresher on core animation, do check out my video on core animation basics. It'll give you a really nice overview and intro. But all we're doing here is we're creating a basic animation for colors. We're setting our from and our two colors and our duration, some other properties that we can set on animations like fill modes and timing functions. And then we're adding that animation to our layer. Now to use this, we'll go down to our linear gradient view here. And in the layout subviews, we're actually going to call this set colors extension we just defined with some new colors here, a purple, a red, and an orange. Now when we pass those in and set the colors, this should actually kick off our animation. Let's see what it looks like. If we run this now, look at that. We've got a nice sheen. We started from a, our original colors, which were kind of a purpley, and then we go to like this red, fiery orange and purple really beautiful effect you can really do a lot of cool things with this but that's how you can add an animation if you want to play with these more or you just want a text overview of what we've just done just come into my repo here the swift arcade 
Under animations, you'll see this thing here called gradients. And this will give you a really nice sort of walk through of everything we've done here, how to set these things up, the coordinate systems, uh, stuff like that. And in there, you'll also find a, a nice example I've created just to play with these things where you can swipe between different gradients that we've like. You can go to the animation and you can just play with the animation and do different things there. And there's also some other nice subtle effects. There's one in here which does this kind of a radial. There's even a more complex subtle radial you can take a look at. And these are some more examples you can play with and explore. Well, there you have it, folks. CA gradient in a nutshell. A really nice popping looking effect. I find in professional work, a lot of clients ask for this. Even for your personal apps, it's a really nice effect to add as it just makes your apps look great and give a really nice holistic smooth look and a really nice polish to your application. Hope you liked the video. If you did like it, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Do come back and we'll continue exploring all things iOS. Okay, thank you so much for coming everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.